Hi, in this video I will show you how to create a skybox with a space theme in Blender and use it in Godot. If you have never used Blender, here are a few tips so you don't get lost. To search for things you can do, press space or F3. Here we deleted an object. You can also use the header menu. And here we reset the rotation of the camera. To reset the location, let's try it again with the menu search. You can find key bindings in the menu search if you hold your mouse over interface items or in the preferences. Remember to always save your work. In the Properties Editor, we rotate the camera 90 degrees on the x-axis. Shift-A allows us to add meshes. Here we create a sphere. Right-click it to set it to smooth shading. And Pet 7 gives us a view from the top. The mouse wheel we can zoom. Holding Shift and the middle mouse button we can pan the view. We select the object with left-click. Press G to move the object. Snap by holding Ctrl and confirm with left click. The middle mouse button we can rotate the view and with F12 we can render our first image. Left click to select the object. Shift S to snap the 3D cursor to the object. Shift A to add a circle mesh. Numpad dot to zoom near the object. Tap to go into edit mode. Make sure all vertices are selected by pressing A multiple times. Press S to scale and type 1.5. Press E to extrude, move the mouse a little bit, but right click. Press S to scale, type 0.9. Go back to object mode by pressing tab. Add a solidify modifier. Add a mirror modifier for the set axis. Add subdivision surface modifier and raise the level for the viewport. Right click the ring to set shading to smooth. Press F12 to render. Have the ring selected with left click. You can rotate the ring pressing R. The status bar on footer tells you what other options you have. For example you can limit the axis to X, Y or C. And instead of using the mouse you can enter a number. Here we open the sidebar pressing N or clicking the little icon. And enter numbers we found somewhat pleasing. F12 to render. In the render properties we select the cycles renderer. We can also change the device to GPU. We can take a look at the world properties. Then we open the shading workspace. And in the viewport shading popover menu we select lights and world. Down in the select menu we select world. The nodes correspond to what we have seen in the properties editor. We add a noise texture node with shift A and connect the factor output to the color input of the background node. We change the scale input to 500. Then we add a brightness and contrast node with Shift A, which automatically connects when placed between a connection. We raise the contrast to 2 and lower the brightness to minus 1.2. F12 to render and we can see some shadow artifacts. To fix that we can add a subdivision surface modifier or what is not shown here in the properties editor under the orange object properties tab we can change the shadow terminator property. F12 to render again and it looks good. We add another noise texture node. Then we add a brightness and contrast node in which we change the contrast to 8. You are right when you have guessed that we are about to put empty spaces in our star field. We add a mix node connecting both texture outputs to it. Select multiply as the blend mode and raise the factor to 1.0.
We press F12 to render. We select the sphere and add a material. In the select menu we select object. And we change the color to some bluish color. Then we select the ring and add the material. This time we select the emission shader and raise the strength to 2. Then we look at the render with F12. The scene contains a light already so we change it. Otherwise we could add one with Shift A. We change it to Sun and lower the strength to 5. Then we add a track to constraint with the sphere as the target. The light is now looking at the sphere. Again, we look at the render. We change to the layout workspace. Then we create a new area with the editor type 3D viewport already selected. You could change that on the top left. Then we change the viewport shading to rendered. We select the camera in the outliner and press numpad 0 to look through the camera. You can check out the view header menu to find more possibilities to align the view. We select the light with left click, press G to move it and left click to confirm. Remember you can always limit to one axis pressing X, Y or C. We can also change settings in the sidebar under the item tab in the transform panel. You can open the sidebar clicking the icon or pressing N. Yet again we look at the render. To make the render usable in a skybox in Godot, we need to change some camera settings. As type, we select panoramic. And as panorama type, we set equirectangular. Our render now looks a bit different. If we haven't done it before, in the render properties, we change the render device to GPU and raise the samples to 512. We could add denoising for the render, but this will add to the render time, so we only change that if the render is too noisy. In the output properties, we raised resolution. The aspect ratio should be 2 to 1. And as the output file format, we changed to Radiance HDR. We could use PNG, but it looks like the lighting in Godot will be better with Radiance HDR. We start our final render and save the image. We create a new Godot project and copy the image we just created in its directory. Then we create a spatial node. And for some visual reference we add two mesh instances. The first is a plain mesh of size 8x8 with an added spatial material. And the second is a cube mesh with an added spatial material too. We then add the camera and while the camera is selected, we align it to our current view. We test it by selecting preview. Then we add a new script to the camera node. This is just a minimal camera script. We then save the scene, press play and select the scene. We continue to add the world environment node and create a new environment resource. Then we change the background mode to sky and create a new panorama sky resource. We drag and drop all of the skybox.hdr image as a texture resource to the panorama property. We can see that the planet is behind our camera. To change that, we rotate the sky by 180 degrees on the y-axis.
To add some eye candy, we add an animation player node. Create an animation and add the keyframe with the energy property set to 1. Then we change the length of the animation to 10 seconds. And in the middle, add another keyframe with the energy property set to 10. We also set the loop property of the animation to true and we set the auto loop property of the animation player to true. We run our program again and enjoy that spectacular light show. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, bye.